All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, last video for projectile motion, conceptual physics. We're going to be kind of doing these advanced problems where we're going to have to think a little harder, maybe a few more steps and things like that. Uh, so let's get to it. A projectile is fired from the ground uh, with the speed of 82 meters per second and angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. How long will it take the projectile to reach its highest point? Okay, so a lot of this is drawn out for us. Let's add some things. 82 meters per second, and we're trying to find the time it takes to reach its highest point. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything. All right, so let's see everything we know in the x and y direction. x and y. Again, always like to start out with acceleration because it's almost always the same. And then that's kind of all we know, right? So it's like, oh, man, we don't really seem to have much information. However, something else we should know. I'm going to use a different color here. Let's use, I'll use red. Uh, is that we can find the components in the x and y direction. So we can find what velocity in the x is at the beginning and the initial velocity in the y. Uh, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using this angle and this hypotenuse here to do that. So, you know, you should have already seen this from previous videos, but we're just going to be using the hypotenuse 82. Uh, for vx and then just using cosine cosine of 40. okay and if this looks confusing please look at previous videos I'm putting this into my calculator now and then i can see that this is going to be 62.82 meters per second so this is 62.82 meters per second and for y pretty much same thing except we're going to use sine now 82 times sine of 40. And this is going to give us 52.71 meters per second. Great. All right. Um, so now let's, I'm going to go back to that blue. So now I know at the beginning, the velocity in the X direction is going to be 62.82. And the initial velocity in the Y direction is going to be 52.71. Okay, but still, we're looking for this time it reaches the highest point, but we only have two pieces of information on both sides. So what else can we know? What else is there that we know about? And we should especially be thinking about at this highest point over here, is there something else we should know? And the next thing that we should know is at the highest point, the velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. So I can put that. I can say the final velocity in the y direction is zero at this time that we are looking for. Okay. Um, so let's use that to uh, see if we can find time now that we have three pieces of information. We should look at a formula sheet and we should see that this formula, a y is v final y minus v initial y divided by t, is the one that has each, all four of these variables. And then let's manipulate this so that we can find, put time on this side and acceleration in the denominator here okay so time is equal to v final y minus v initial y divided by a y and now let's just plug things in and of course hopefully you just have your formula so formula sheet so you can just plug these things in v final y is zero minus v initial y 52.71 divided by acceleration y negative 10 so it's pretty simple over here. This is just going to be 5.27 seconds. So it's going to take 5.27 seconds for the velocity in the y to be equal to zero or to reach its highest point or both, I should say. And yeah, great. Uh, part B asks, okay, now that we, that's how long it took to reach its highest point. How long is it going to take to reach when it gets all the way to the ground over here? I'm going to use a different color. And we should know that uh, when it's launched from the ground and goes to the highest point, it's just going to take a double the amount of time to reach the ground once again. Okay, again, this everything is pretty much parallel to each other. So I'm just going to do 5.27 times 2. 
And this is going to give us, I'll put it in my calculator, 10.54. <laughs> uh, 10.54 5, seconds. Great. Okay. Uh, that's part B. And last part here, part C, I'll use a different ink. Uh, part C says, when the projectile is at its highest point, how fast is it moving? And you might be saying like, okay, at its highest point, we just we found out it's not moving, but that's not correct. If it's not moving, it would just drop when um, it hits the ground here, here, but it's not dropping. So we should know at its highest point, it's only moving in the X direction, this velocity in the X, okay? And we should know that the velocity in the X is constant so it's always going to be going 62.82 meters per second while it's in the air in the x direction. So since there's no velocity in the y, it's only in the x, and that's going to be 62.82 meters per second. I hope that makes sense. Um, we're going to do a similar problem to this, and I would highly suggest you try and do this mostly on your own. But anyway, here we go. A projectile is fired from the ground with a speed of 40 meters per second and an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. How long will it take the projectile to reach its highest point? What will be the total time the projectile will be in the air? And this question is a little bit different, but hopefully you can figure it out. What is the total horizontal distance covered by the projectile? Okay, again, let's write down some things that are helpful to us. Uh, 40 meters per second, that's what it's getting launched out of. Um, anything else? We're looking for the time at this point right here. I think that's mostly it. So let's find what we know. Always starting out with acceleration. And then, okay, and then again, we seem a little bit stuck, but... I am going to find what we know in the X and Y direction. And again, I'm just using Sokotoa to help me with this. VX is going to be equal to 40. That's the hypotenuse there times uh, cosine of 60. And you get 20. Oh, I should have known that already. So this is 20 meters per second. Okay, and the initial velocity in the y is going to be 40 times sine of 60. Let me put that into my calculator. And that's going to be 34.64 meters per second. Great. So now I can... Uh, include this information into my chart here. So velocity in the X is equal to 20 meters per second. Velocity initial in the Y is equal to 34.64 meters per second. Great. And uh, so anyway, we only have two pieces of information, but from last time we also learned that at the very end over here, uh, well, I should say when it reaches its highest point over here, the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. So we know the final velocity in the y is equal to zero. And we could find the time, okay, when it when that velocity in the y equals uh, zero. So let's do some calculations. Um, change the color. Okay, so using looking at these four variables, again, we should notice that it comes from this formula. We have acceleration y is equal to Velocity divided in the y minus velocity initial in the y divided by t. And since we're looking for t, we're going to isolate that, putting this on the other side and putting this down here. Time is equal to velocity divided in the y minus velocity initial in the y divided by acceleration in the y. Okay, so let's do this. Time is equal to final velocity in y, which is 0, minus v initial in the y, 34.64 divided by acceleration y with negative 10. So we can find that time is equal to 3.46 seconds. Great. Now, what part B is, what will be the total time that projectile will be in the air? Let me use a different color here. Okay, so we know when it goes halfway through 
the time is 3.46, but now we want to go one goes all the way back down. What's the time here? And again, we should know that when it's launched from the ground, it's uh, there's a bit of a symmetry of what's going on here. So if it takes half, <clears throat> if it takes 3.46 to get all the way to the top, it's going to take another 3.46 to get all, all the way back down again. So the total time it's in the air is just 3.46 times two and <clears throat> that's going to equal 6.92 seconds okay did in my head this time because i should be able to do that <laughs> okay great um so part c let me use a different color mm, green okay part c says what is the total horizontal distance covered by the projectile and this should be this right here what and that variable is, what is this displacement in the X? Okay. And, okay. So we only have two piece of, two variables here. So what's our third piece of variable? It's like, well, we have time, but which time do we use? Do we use 3.46 or do we use 6.92? And since we're trying to find the displacement from when it reaches all the way to the end of where it landed, we're going to be using 6.92 because that's the time it took to get all the way to the other side. Okay. Okay. So let's use that again. The only formula in the X is V X is equal to displacement X divided by time since there's no acceleration. And this time we're looking for this. So we're going to manipulate this and just do displacement X is equal to V X times time. V X is 20 times time, which is 6.92. 20 times 6.92, oops. And that will be 138.4 meters. All right, guys, I hope that helped. One final question left. Bit of an interesting question, uh, a classical physics question, I guess. A hunter is on the ground waiting in some bushes to tranquilize some monkeys. A hunter spots a monkey hanging in a tree that is 40 meters away horizontally and 30 meters high vertically. The hunter aims the gun directly at the monkey and shoots. However, the smart monkey lets go of the tree the moment the bullet is shot. If the bullet is shot out at 90 meters per second, will the bullet A travel over the monkey? B, travel below the monkey, or C, hit the monkey. Okay, so a few things here. When we're looking at this, and of course you can pause and think about it on your own, but when this gun gets shot out, and let me use a different color, I'll use purple. When this gun gets shot out, you know, we're th we usually think like, oh, it's a gun, it's very powerful, it shoots very fast, and this monkey is going to drop from this tree and start falling the moment it's uh, shot out. So we're most likely going to think, oh, okay, since he drops, it's probably just going to fly over his head as he falls down. So it's probably going to travel over the monkey. That's probably where our intuition lies, you know? However, we need to think about two things. First of all, this bullet that gets fired out, just like the monkey when he drops, they're both going to experience gravity when they're in the air. So what's going to be happening is this bullet isn't just going like a straight line up this way. The moment this bullet is fired, it is going to start falling. And what's going to happen is if, if this monkey drops the moment uh, it gets shot out, it's actually going to be dropping into the line of fire. Okay, and that's what's going to be happening because since it's aimed directly at the monkey, the bullet's going to curve down because of gravity, and the monkey is going to meet that curve again because of gravity, and it will hit the monkey. Okay, there's a video demonstrating this in the next slide if you have the option to watch that. Um, but if not, that's a pretty cool thing that happens, and um. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this series with projectile motion. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking about Newton's laws. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.